Hello and welcome to episode 30, episode 30 of the Cat Lady Podcast. I'm Andrea, the Cat Lady, that's two T's, C-A-T-T stands for Craft All the Thing. Welcome back, any returning viewers, and if you're new, hello. Nice to have some new people check in too, I hope you like what you see. I mainly talk about knitting, spinning, sewing, uh, some DIY stuff, mainly knitting really is the primary craft, but I do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So, uh, and I been changing around formats here and there and what, uh, where I record and what I do. So I am in my basement right now, which is where my kitty cats live. Uh, I have my little troublemaker kitty here that likes to pee on things. So, and if I open the window, it attracts them. <laughs> so this is where I've been recording just for the intro part, because I don't like to bring all my crafty stuff down in the basement and get full of cat hair. So. I do my intros in the basement and then I will change locations and I'm always at random places, either my craft room or other places. So today I'll actually I'll be in my dining room because I have some bigger things to show. So with that, this is Devo, by the way. Sadie is uh, eating her lunch, so welcome. I, you can find me on Ravelry as the Cat Lady Instagram, Periscope, all as the Cat Lady. I haven't been doing Periscope much. I still haven't really figured out what I want to do with that. So, but eventually it'll click and I'll figure it out. But, um, I'm the cat lady on Twitter and everywhere, pretty much everywhere. So pretty much I figured if you Google the cat lady on anything, you'll, as long as it's got two T's in it, you'll find where I am on Facebook, YouTube, YouTube, I'm crafty cat lady. But again, if you Google the cat lady on YouTube, then it comes up. So, uh, feel free to follow me everywhere. Get, uh, get me some more likes on YouTube and Ravelry group, join in the Ravelry group. Uh, I do all my giveaways on Ravelry, so if you want to win prizes, do uh, come so join the Ravelry group. I'm playing with the idea of an Instagram giveaway soon, maybe when I hit 500 followers. I'm at like 310, so it's a little ways to go. Um, but I'm not really sure the best way how to do it, how to like pick a winner, because I, I know there's programs that you pay for that can help you pick winners, but I'm not looking to invest any uh, money into this, so Just writing people's names down, putting a hat. I don't know. That sounds like a lot of work, so we'll see. But if we get to 500, we'll do something special. So, and same goes for the Ravelry group. Um, I don't know where I am in that. Almost 200, maybe? I don't remember. But anyways, you don't care. <laughs> Show notes are on the blog, which is thecatlady.blogspot.com. Uh, I try to keep them up to date as much as I can. I'm recording Tuesday afternoon. It's Tuesday, October 27th, 2015. And yeah, I've said, ever since I've started volunteering at my daughter's school, I've been all over the place in recording times because typically Monday morning was my time. I'd get up, I'd take the kids to school, and Monday morning was my time to record. But now that I'm spending Monday mornings in Emily's school, it's kind of throwing everything off. And my son is home, he's down He's down for a nap right now. So it's like almost two in the afternoon. So I'm already, I'm already spent for the day. <laughs> but anyways, enough jabbering. So this week's segments are gonna be podcast news, knitting, I did some spinning finally. It's a DIY, a few random DIY bits today. Uh, my stash, which is my birthday edition. So last Thursday was my birthday. So I will show off what I got for my birthday. Some of it's crafty related. It, related some of it's not so I didn't really get much other stash so and just a weekend review and how how my week was last week also we need to redraw our giveaway winner so my hundred member Ravelry giveaway so yes I'm not quite at 200 yet but anyways I gave the winner a month I announced her name twice in two episodes so I haven't heard anything so I'm going to redraw it so stay tuned for that First up, we're going to jump right into introductions. Uh, if you want to come say hi to me in the Ravelry group, I will give you a little shout out. So our first introduction this week was Sarah Nova, who is Jessica of the Sarah Nova Crafts Podcast. I've talked about her before. Met her at Rhinebeck, so thank you for jumping in and introducing yourself, Jessica. She's from southern New Hampshire, and she works from home. So she has uh, some extra, probably some extra moments of craft time when the rest of us have to be, well, not, not me, I'm I work from home too, stay at home mom, but uh, when other people are like driving, she could, she'd be knitting. So, Also crochet knit too is Emily from East Greenville, Pennsylvania. She's been crocheting since 2007 and knitting since 2014, so a pretty new, new knitter. 
She's a property, property manager of her apartment, so she has lots of downtime to knit, so that's pretty cool. She has two grown boys, and she has a granddaughter and a grandson arriving in February, so congratulations. That is coming up soon. And she has a YouTube channel, and she is crochet.knit, so I'll have to check her out, see what kind of videos she's got on YouTube. Maybe she's got some crochet tutorials, because I would still need to figure that out. Those were all the intros this week. Also coming up this week, uh, I am hosting the video knit night, virtual knit night, whatever you want to call it. I guess it's virtual knit night, it's not really video. But anyways, virtual knit night Friday, this Friday, October 30th, uh, Google Hangouts. I'll post a link in the Ravelry group. Oh, there's Sadie. And come on, come in, hang out. We sit around, we do video chat. I guess it is a video chat. <laughs> Anyways, Google Hangouts is like you need a you need a webcam and a microphone, and we sit around just like this, knitting, talking, having a beverage. It's a good time. So uh, they're they're going on they're going on every day of the week almost from one podcast or another. So I will do one on Friday. So come come join us. We'd love to have some uh, new faces. Another thing in podcast news is the catalog. Uh, it's running now through mid-December. Me and Sarah, the Canadian Knitter Podcast, are hosting together. But We're hosting together, but they're separate. So there's a thread in her group and there's a thread in my group. So you can enter both. And you are encouraged to enter both, of course. And she will have a prize, which I think she is going to have a yarn prize. I want to say it was Ancient Fiber Arts. And I will have a bag prize. So I will have a custom bag, a drawstring bag and whatever other odds and ends I can throw in there. So stay tuned. Once I whip it up, I will be sure to post a picture of it. So you can enter to win a bag. You can enter to win yarn. And yeah, so come on. It's the theme is cats, but really it's animals. So we've already got a few cool entries in the thread. We have a fox hat, so animal related. We have a cat quilt. Uh, we have a... Someone that made a little cowl for their cat. Like, I don't really think it was like permanent. Like, I don't think the cat will wear it very long, but it was really cute. She called it a kitty cowl. So, you know, be creative. Uh, cat themed yarn, like cat fabric or animal fabric, you know, something for your animal, dog sweater, um, cat hat, you know, the fox hat, anything. Anything animal related, just kind of a fun little play on the cat lady, really. and. You know, everyone loves cats, so <laughs> almost. I should make little hats for the cats. That would be hilarious. They would never wear them, though. Uh, and that was it. So let's go ahead and do the giveaway. I'm going to draw the giveaway winner here, and then I will head on upstairs to start talking about the crafty stuff. So this was for the 100 member giveaway, which included a custom bag. So. I, you, I will work with you on debating, figuring out what kind of fabric you like, and you know I'm, I'm limited. I'm a bit limited, but you know again we'll figure something out. Uh, two skeins, 50 grams each of fashion toes merino nylon yarn, either in a kind of a greenish blue or there was a I have a burgundy, so pick which color you like better, and you can have those. And then there was. A set of stitch markers from the Tangled Skein. I believe they were like a bluish color. I'll post the picture. That's what I'll do. Right when I'm talking about this, I'll throw up the picture that I got of everything. A little cat that I knit up, Mr. Beans, Beans the Cat, and a piece of maple candy from Vermont, donated by Mandy Pinecone. So, a bag, oh, and a custom perler clip or magnet. So little perler beads, either the, like I make the little bows, so either a clip or just if you'd like a magnet instead. So that is the prize. So it's a pretty, pretty decent prize package for the 100 member giveaway. I had 68 entries, so I'm, and I had a lot of entries that I had to have deleted. So if I pick one that's been deleted, because it was by me, <laughs> then I will redraw. But doing the random number generator, 2 through 68. And we'll see what we come up with when move my book. Make sure you can see that. Two through sixty-eight. Fifty-eight. All right. Let's see what fifty-eight is. I 
think that's safe from my deleted posts. They were all pretty much on the first page. Nope, page three. Fifty-eight is the Needle Nook. You have a great podcast. I enjoy you sharing all your crafts. My favorite section is the DIY. Nothing negative. Very sweet. So, Needle Let's see where's. Right there, 58. Hopefully you can see that. So close, little panda. <laughs> That's my friend Amanda. Uh, so please contact me. I will give you 30 days, just like I gave the, pre the previous winner, to contact me and discuss what you'd like for your prize. So congratulations. All right, we'll see you back in a minute. Or actually, in like literally... A second for uh, for you. This podcast has been taken over by your cat lady. <laughs> this is my husband's Halloween costume, <laughs> and it's pretty cool. And I'm just being goofy, and I can't see. Okay, so anywho, I'm back up in my dining room. Hopefully, I can tell if I'm crooked or not. Maybe a little bit. Hold on one second. Uh, maybe. But good enough. So, on to knitting. So, I didn't get a, didn't get a ton done this week. Uh, it's been just, this month is always so hectic. I mean, there's Halloween stuff all over the place. There's my birthday. There's just always like a million things to do, it seems. So, don't. Oh! I forgot my uh, finished object, so it's one of those days. Hold on. Okay, finished objects. I finally finished my socks. So, these are my vanilla gummy bean jelly bear socks. This is the gummy bear colorway in the Knit Picks Felici. They're somewhat tall socks they let's see they go up uh, halfway to my knee I'm tall so you know I'm just if you watch Sarah the Canadian knitter she was just talking about her socks and how they're, they're almost knee high and like yeah I literally have like tiny little ball left of each each skein so this is pretty much I maybe maybe could have squeezed another stripe out of it maybe so it wasn't really, you know, worth it at that point because I wanted it for my mini blanket too. So, um, and I, you know, I get a little nervous when I get close to the end. So, anyways, no, I don't, I don't remember which sock. Oh, okay. So sock one was 64 stitches. These are done in size zeros. I did the 64, and it's snug, and I like it. However, I don't necessarily like the look of the stretched fabric that it makes. And I don't know if that's normal. I like I'm still a sock newbie, so but I mean it's it stretches, but it's snug, you know, it feels good on the foot. It's a short row heel, which I have no issues with. I like it. I don't know if I I don't know if I noticed the difference between that one and the fish lips kiss. So I'm gonna have to do a side by side comparison of this sock and the last pair of socks I made. So I thought, okay, it was half an accident, half I was gonna try it anyways. Let's go with 68 stitches. So I, I originally was only was gonna do this in 64, so it would match this one the same. But I accidentally increased to 68 and just went with it. It's loose. I mean, it's not terribly loose, but when you're when they're wearing them together, it's loose. <laughs> so it's not as necessarily as comfortable as this one to me. So my quest for the perfect sock is going to continue. I am going to do my next pair on double zeros. Amanda uh, from Stitching You and More, Little Panda 518, sent me some double zeros and triple zeros. So I'm going to try the double zeros and see what see, see what happens. And it's a it's a fixed circular, so I'm actually gonna see if I can do two at a time magic loop. So we're just going all experimental on the next round. And I'm gonna do the Felici mosaic, which is very it's like a muted muted pair of these really. So a very similar colorway. So when they're side by side, a little hard to tell, like in the skein form. I bet when they're knitted, it's gonna be obvious. But um, overall, I liked working with the Felici. Uh, I I am a little disappointed, and I have 
This was one of the complaints I had heard before. This sock is great as far as the colors. And it's like going to be hard to see up front anyway, up close anyways, I'm a little far away. Uh, this one, however, this skein is really bad with the bleeding and the spotties. Like, I don't know if you can see that. Like, the splotches, like in the, in the yellow, especially there. There's like splotches of blue and purple, or it's probably the purple that's in there, and then, and it's everywhere. I mean, it's very splotchy. So I'm a little disappointed in that, but they're socks. I don't really care that much. Not enough that I'm going to call and complain or anything. So it's fairly inexpensive yarn. It's soft. It's cozy. So, but you know, you get what you pay for, I guess. So that was my one downside of that. So that is my finished object though. So that was my one and only finished object. I was bound and determined to get those done before I recorded. So works in progress. I started, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll saw, you'll have seen that I cast on my Vijancha shawl by Martina Beam. It is a very long, crazy shawl that's good. It's actually got a bit of a hood on it. Well, I mean, things kind of epic. So, uh, Jen, the uncreative crafter, sent me this pattern as a gift. And I started it while I was sitting in my oh-so-scary hotel room at Rhinebeck, or outside of Rhinebeck. And so, yeah, I started picking that up again. So, you know, like last time you saw it, it was literally like this big, you know. That's why that's where it was left off. So, so yes, it's gotten substantially larger. I'm actually almost done to the point where it's going to join in the round. So this is kind of the hooded part, which it doesn't look that big. I don't know if I'm doing it right. So I'm, I'm just going to go with it though. So these are size threes. They are supposed to be done on three and a half, on two and a half, so apparently, but I read that wrong and read three millimeter and just got threes. Don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Hoping. Um, I mean, this is pretty wide, but I'm not really sure how it's going to work. But then it's going to join in the round at this point. So I mean, I it's so I guess this is just kind of the front part of the hood. So you kind of I don't really know. I don't really know how this is going to work. But uh, again, I don't this I don't need to wear it as a hood either. I mean, she kind of just wears it around her neck, so. But I would like the hood option, so. But I switch, after I get past this section, you switch needle sizes and join in the round. So I have like four, four more rows, I think, left before I join in the round. So I was hoping to get that done before I film too, but I didn't get a chance, so. But I will, before I forget, because I always forget, move my stitch marker, project keeper, up here. So that I know where I left off. Okay. And I'm using my stitch markers from Sue Dangled Skein, CA. And this is the Michaels uh, Loops and Thread Wool Like. It's a light fingering weight yarn in the mauve colorway. And these are Knitpicks Harmony Thick Circulars that I'm borrowing from a friend from my knit group. And then I will switch to my Knit Picks Nickel in size 4. So, that is all I have on the works in progress. Uh, I've been... Everybody in my little group of VKNers, almost everyone, not everyone, is contemplating or changing their sock yarn blanket. And I am just, like, having the most internal struggle ever on what I should do. I never really thought about it before, but then everyone saw Jet how small and cute Jen's blanket was. Her squares are literally like this big, you know. So the rest of ours are like two to three inches. Hers are literally like an inch. <laughs> so they're tiny. So Sarah's like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. I'm changing my blanket. And she did. Uh, but she didn't, she hasn't ripped out her old one. She's just starting a new one, essentially. So then Lynn cast on a blanket and she kind of kept playing, you know, making samples and samples until she found one she liked. Sue, I think, has changed hers. So everyone's kind of changing their blankets, and I'm like, oh. Because, yeah, I've noticed it's a little thin in places. It's like, you know, loose. It's not real, it's not a very tight fabric. And I'm using size twos, so I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I don't necessarily want tiny squares, 
but I would like a denser fabric. So I might play around with casting on a different, just a different needle size and see what it looks like and go from there. I don't know. But then at the same time, I don't, you know, does it really matter to me? I don't know. So kind of just going back and forth. But I haven't added anything to it, so, but that's where I am on my blanket. Uh, next stop, spinning. I finally got to my wheel, and I threw on my fiber optic yarns that I got from Rhinebeck. I had the card, what did I do with it? I probably left it somewhere. Anyways, I'll link it in the show notes, but it's fiber, fiber optic yarns. It's the steampunk colorway. I'll post a picture of the braid, and I'll post a picture of what I've done so far. Haven't done much, but I got to finally spin because it's been forever since I've spun anything. What's the last thing I spun? I think the merino silk purple from Fiber Stash. That was like forever ago, so it's nice to finally get back on the wheel. It did feel a little clunky at first, but you know, I got really, I got into it pretty good pretty quick. Um, I had an issue where it kept breaking at first, but again, it was just me not, not spinning in a while. Uh, the yarn, the fiber itself is fine, but I've noticed there's lots of little just felted fuzzies in it, you know, that I got to stop and keep picking out. So, and I have dyed fiber before and it always happens to me, but you know, she's a professional. This is her business. I would just, like, I had no issues with the fiber stash braid and this one I'm finding more chunks in it. Not a big deal, but just kind of threw me off guard for um, the first first go go around with it. So, but now I know and whatever. So, um, that's it for spinning. This is hopeful. This is actually hopefully going to be a shorter episode because I haven't done a whole lot. Uh, DIY. These are silly, but they're DIY. <laughs> first thing, at, and this isn't really in order, but the first thing I have on my list is uh, my cat's litter box. I shot a picture of it before it was in use, um, so I'll put a picture up in there. But it's a Rubbermaid bin that's cut out, and it's just, like I said, it's silly, but my cat, he stands in the litter box, and he doesn't squat, and he pees, and it just, it just clears the, the walls of the regular size litter pan. So the vet had, we had done this once before, the vet's like cut out a litter bag bin, and I don't know why we got rid of it, but at one point it probably just got gross, and we got rid of it. Cause he wasn't doing it anymore and while well, he's back to doing it like all the time now so that's why my cats are in the basement because well he was marking territory everywhere now he's just i don't know i just don't even know so there's my first diy i threw that together last night my another oh yes last night was a diy night apparently so the other my other diy last night was a hula skirt out of a paper bag thank you google and it is like the most wonky looking DIY, you know, the one in the tutorial online had pretty, like, flower duct tape. I'm like, all I got is black gorilla tape. That's what we're using. Sorry, today's Hawaiian day at school. It's, like, spirit week, so Monday was pajama day. Now it's Tuesday. It's Hawaiian day. I dug a lay, like a flower lay, out of the garage because it was in our bag of Goodwill stuff. Whipped together this, like, wonky hula skirt. Put a, put a few Velcro tabs on it so she can take it on and off because she obviously can't take it to the bathroom and she couldn't, I just threw it in her backpack. I don't even know if she'll wear it because I shoved it in her backpack. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes today. It's probably going to come home. It's either not going to make it home or it's going to be just shredded because, I mean, it's a paper bag. And I put a flower in her hair, so <laughs> here's a picture of her in her hula skirt. <coughs> so, but I didn't know what else to send her in. We don't have any hula themed anything. The lay was like, it was a miracle I still had that. But just sending her in the flower lay seemed a little cheesy too, like lame. So, whatever. And lastly, what did I do with it? Oh, it's right here. I finished my picture frame for my craft room. Just on a whim on Saturday, I'm like, I should do this. And, well, I just got back from Rhinebeck, so I had all these fun pictures that would have been perfect for my frame. So, my, this is hangs above my craft room. So, I, you can usually see the bottom of it when I'm filming in my room, but... Um, go through the pictures. We have Rhinebeck. That's the whole gang of Rhinebeck. Yep. Uh, we got me and Sue and Lynn. 
And then down here you have me and David with one of his, and it was knitting themed. So his bunny. And then the kids in their little vest slash dress that I made a couple years ago. And their little cone hats. And then we have Emily and her bunny when she was a baby. And there's me and my grime shawl. My purple hair, which I miss. And then this is the only other picture I have of my hubby in his hat. So he's a little bit chubbier in that picture than he is now. But this is the only picture I had with him in his hat. And I wanted him in there. So me and Jen. And then me and Sarah. And then me and Jeanette. So I got all my Ryan Beck pictures in there and then a few spatterings of my family. So that was perfect for my craft room. So uh, got those all printed out on my home, home computer printer and just cut them out and got them in there. So that was that. Stash birthday edition. So Thursday was my birthday. 35. Hooray. Officially. No turning back, mid-30s, here we come. Uh, <laughs> into the older 30s, late 30s. But uh, it was a busy day, but uh, throughout it was kind of a, had a lot of little mini celebrations throughout the week. Uh, my best friend came over and brought me apple crisp that she makes, homemade apple crisp with fresh apples she picked from the orchard. And we went out and got ice cream and she bought me some beer, so can't go wrong with that. We ordered pizza, so that was fun. Uh, and I'm just going to show you the cards I got because while well, I talk about them because it's kind of funny. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, of course, she's, she's my best friend, so it's got to be a cheesy, humorous card. So this was the one she picked, which says butt types. <laughs> and then it says Cinnabons, the smile, the pancake, and the, what was it? the inflate a butt. <laughs> And then it says, hope your day is everything it was cracked up to be. <laughs> so, that was funny. Everyone got a laugh out of that. My dad stopped over and brought me a lottery ticket for, there's like a special raffle lottery ticket. So the odds of winning are better. But the prize, and the prize I think right now is at like 728000 So, that would be nice. <laughs> so, crossing my fingers for some big money. And then my grandma sent me a card and gave me a Panera gift card. So I've already been to Panera with that twice. Because <laughs> I'm a sucker for Panera breakfast. And then Jim, and my husband. Oh, where was the card? Oh, my, my cute little card from my grandma. <laughs> Happy birthday, granddaughter. And then Jim got me, Jim and the kids got me the mom card, of course. Cupcake and Emily drew me a little picture of her cat. I think she says it's a cat wearing a butterfly costume. Uh, but uh, so mine was an interesting themed birthday for from the hubby. I'll put a picture of the first thing I got. It's Star Wars Campbell soup and macaroni and cheese. We've, uh, we've since eaten a box of the macaroni and cheese and a can of the soup, and boy, they're horrible. <laughs> Sorry if you guys like Kraft Mac and Cheese and Campbell's Soup, but uh, we don't eat that stuff a lot. I don't really eat soup, condensed soups, and I don't, and typically I buy the organic mac and cheese, which I don't even really like box mac and cheese anyways, but wow, <laughs> I haven't had a box of regular mac and cheese and condensed soup in a long time so it was like funky <laughs> so I still have another box and another can so I don't know what we're doing with that but anyways and then I got my Star Wars beach towel because you know gotta have a Star Wars beach towel right and it has C-3PO R2D2 and BB8. <laughs> so um, that was pretty funny. Can you see a theme? And then I got my BB8 mug, which I already knew this one was coming because I showed him a picture of this. And well, here's what happened Jen sent me a picture. She's like, hey, you gotta have this mug. And I, I'm like, oh my gosh, where is that? And she said, GameStop. So then I forwarded it to my husband and said, hey, you gotta get me this mug. So. 
a little BB-8 logo on it, which is cute. And then BB-8 on the other side. It's huge. I can fit two K-cups in here. Not full. I can fit a 12 ounce or a 10 ounce, so 18 ounces. I fit 18 ounces of coffee in here because I brewed a, 12, a 10 ounce and then an 8 ounce portion. <laughs> I barely had enough room for cream and sugar, but I fit it in there. It was like right to the ground. I probably should have brewed a 10 and a 6. Um, but my first mug, when I did open it, it, had a big crack in it. But he took it back and had no issues exchanging it. So my mug. And inside my mug, and I don't remember which mug had which socks. It was a pair of cat socks. And then I... Doctor Who TARDIS mug and when you fill it up it's heat activated the TARDIS on the front disappears and appears in the back which is super cool. Both the BB-8 and the TARDIS mugs are not hand wash <laughs> or not dishwasher safe. And then another pair of cat socks. Which these ones are adorable. Little winking kitties on there. And then a cat mug, which this one looks like it wouldn't, it wouldn't be dishwasher safe, but it's dishwasher and microwave safe. So it's a cute little orange key. And Halloween socks. So, some fun socks and some fun mugs. Oh, fiber optic yarns. There it is. <laughs> I'll link it in the notes. And then, I already knew this one about this one too, but he purchased the... Yoshi's Woolly World for the Wii U, which is a yarn themed Yoshi game, which I haven't played it yet. He already opened it and played it because I that was fine. But it came with a little knit Yoshi, which is adorable. <laughs> so that was cute. And I keep saying I could probably make one of these. I could probably find a pattern. There are patterns on Ravelry, but it's pretty cute. So and that's an it's an amiibo, so it actually like interacts with the uh Wii U. So then, my mom got me, oh, this was the card for my dad, he got me one of those sweet little mushy cards, like, wherever you go, whatever you do, you write in the world by just being you. Thanks, dad. And then my mom got me a Mickey Mouse card, <laughs> which is cute. Adding another candle doesn't make you older, just makes your life brighter. Um, she got me a Joanne gift card, so yay, more crafty things. So Emily had started this already. She made like this little card thingy. She put stickers in it, wrote some random letters in there. I think she even started to couple, decorate the front. Well, then she, at the very end, she said, she wrote a picture of me wearing a birthday hat. And then I told her I was 35 and I had her practice her numbers. So then she's like, oh, here, here's a birthday card. So it's kind of my... Kind of a birthday card that was already like half done, but whatever. Uh, and then my mother and father-in-law, so Jim's parents, gave me a Joanne gift card. Hooray! And then, oh, and then of course I piled everything on top of it. But then I got this, which is craziness. I'm sure the suspense is killing you. Here's the card. Which is kind of funny. I like photography. I do photography stuff, you know. Uh, shield your eyes. Oh, <laughs> it's definitely not as bright on the camera. So flashes at you, but holding your face and it's like, uh, it's like a camera flash. So that was a cool <laughs> birthday card. But this was the craziness. I got a new sewing machine. It is a Brother XR3140 computerized sewing and quilting machine, 140 unique built-in stitches plus 55 alphanumeric stitches. Makes a very, very basic monogram stitch. So nothing fancy, but it makes just very standard letters, but cool. Um, nine sewing and quilting feet. Eight styles of one-step auto size buttonholes. Like craziness. I don't, you don't even need to use the foot pedal. It comes with one, but it's optional. It's got a button that you just push and it starts and then you push it and it stops. And I haven't took, it's not been taken out of the box yet, but I watched an instructional DVD on it. It's got, you know, auto threader, 
the bobbins top loading and you can see it because like my sewing machine works just fine but it's from like 2000 or something so it's you know 15 years old so it's you know I'm trying to thread the needle the bobbins like in the machine so it's like when it's running low I usually don't know until I'm out <laughs> midway through with the uh, seam so I'm very excited to get that going and hopefully make some bag get make the bag making process a little bit easier maybe I can always hope because you know I feel like it takes me forever to make a bag so I'd like to make more bags uh, so yeah that was very exciting so those were all my birthday stash week in review so <clears throat> like I said last week was pretty busy it was my birthday so I had a lot of birthday celebration stuff so Monday is when the last I recorded so I was recording Monday Tuesday my friend came over and we had the apple crisp we had pizza and beer and had a good time Tuesday is usually when I take Emily to karate, but since I knew my friend was coming over, I wanted to make sure to get home in time because I don't know if I would have made it back in time. So we didn't go to karate. So Wednesday we went to karate. Well then I have a parenting, me and Jim have been going to this parenting seminar and it's called the relaxed parent. It's supposed to be about parenting without so much yelling and, you know, keeping your stress levels down and whatever. It's been very interesting, but it's Wednesday night, so it's like, it's just tiring because you know Jim's coming off work I've it's been a full day running around the house so you know and we take we've been taking the kids and they stay they have free child care well since I knew I was taking Emily to karate and I needed to come back and get us dinner and figure out all that shenanigans I told Jim how about I just go you stay home with the kids I don't really want to deal with it I don't want to deal with bringing them home late and trying to deal with bedtime so he said sure but are you sure that's I mean I feel bad I said no 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 don't feel bad so we Basically, I went to karate, came home, I started whipping up dinner for them, and Jim came home and I took off. So, yeah, it was a busy, it was a busy day. Then Thursday was my birthday. I had breakfast with my mother-in-law, so me and David went out to breakfast with her. Uh, usually, Dave and I have parenting, uh, mommy and me class, but that was canceled last week, which I was kind of glad, because again, it's like I had all these things just piled in last week. So, we had a nice breakfast, and... What else did we do? I think we just chilled out kind of for the most part the rest of the day. Uh, but that evening we had trunk or treat at Emily's school. I'll put up a couple pictures of that. It's a little chaotic, but it was fun. So the kids got a bunch of candy. Uh, they got to wear their costumes again, so that was cool. And then Friday we had a football game for our niece. So it was outside. It was a little chilly, but it wasn't too bad. It wasn't as crowded as the last time, last game. The last game we went to was homecoming game, so it was like insane. This was senior night. She's a senior. So we got there early and everything, but it still wasn't as crazy busy. So that was good. And we got home kind of late, but yeah, we all had, everyone had a good time. Uh, Saturday was house cleaning day. Yeah, we literally just cleaned the house top to bottom because it had been a while. <laughs> and my mom was coming over. So my mom and stepdad came over at around 3 o'clock. Just hung out and hung out with the kids and then we went out to dinner. Uh little burger bar that's down the street which is really good had a really good chicken wrap that I was like I really wanted again it's so good I actually bought stuff for the store to try to make it myself <laughs> this is really good it's like barbecue sauce chicken and bacon and lettuce tomato like, dipped in ranch yummy uh, and then we came back and uh, Emily and my mom did some painting on this like, there, <laughs> my mom had bought a plate like a place setting to, that you're supposed to paint and decorate and then bake it well, like halfway through the set, we realized we were using the wrong paint. Like we weren't using the designated paint. We were just using plain old acrylic paint. So we're like, oh well. So now it's in my china cabinet because it's not like, you you weren't allowed to eat off of it anyways. So I don't know what the point of it was. It's like, decorate the plate and bake it, but then you're not allowed to eat off it. So like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. But anyways, so now it's just going to hang out in my china cabinet. So, and then Sunday, we went to Huckleberry Railroad, which is, after looking through some pictures, we've done this over the past six years, so since 2010, when my daughter was born, we've gone to Huckleberry Railroad five times, so we missed one year. We went 2010, 2011, we missed 2012, so the year David was born, 2013, 14, and now 2015. 
So this is a, an official family tradition. Emily's been since she's born. We only missed the one time, and I'm guessing because David was little and we just just didn't plan plan well for it. And what it is, is you ride, um, it's this little village. They decorate for Halloween. We've actually never been there other than Halloween. So I don't know what they do during like the summer and stuff, but then you go through all these little houses all decorated and everyone's dressed up and they pass out candy and they also have a train. So, and the train rides about a half an hour and they, they decorate the woods and stuff that you go through and have all these displays. So I'll put a couple pictures up. I forgot my big camera, my real camera. So I only took a couple pictures with my phone, but, um, but we waited, we got there first and got there first in line for the train. And we waited about 30 minutes because we didn't want to lose our spot, but we got to ride in the caboose. And there was these seats that like you climb up a like a three prong like ladder that's built into the wall. So one of those like just steel bars. And actually the ladder was only on one side and the other side I just had to kind of jump over to. Uh, but they had two seats up there. And so Jim sat on one side, I sat on the other and we held a kid in our lap. So he had Emily, I had David and you were like way up. And looking out the windows so it was really cool and we were in the caboose so and that's where the conductor actually does his little talking spiel and stuff so we learned a lot about the history of the train and the park and stuff too on the way but that was uh you know being that we've been there so many times this made it a whole new experience kind of so so that was fun and then afterwards we which we've done for the past three years i think we went to frankie Muth, which is if you've if you're familiar with Michigan touristy places, Frankenmuth is one of those big ones. It's a German-themed town, and they have incredible food. <laughs> so they're known for their chicken dinners at Zender's and then Bavarian Inn, two restaurants, same family. Um, but, oh, they're so good. So good. Family style, chicken, like, they have all these salads, so like a bean salad, coleslaw, pasta salad. They have chicken soup, which is okay. The chicken soup actually is like blah, but you know, you get bread and butter and blah, blah, blah. And then you get the chicken and mashed potatoes and stuffing and cranberry relish and oh, butter noodles. <sighs> they crunch up crackers on top of it. It's so good. So yeah, we just ate until we were about to explode. And then you get little, little bowls of ice cream, like soft serve ice cream at the end because you really need that by the time you've eaten all that food. But, uh, and then we got, you know, my, in, my mother and father-in-law ordered a picture, two pitchers of beer, so we're sort of drinking beer, and, you know. So, um, yeah, so it was like, it, it, it was just insane. So it was perfect, and I had a free coupon for free birthday dinner, so we used my coupon, so that was cool. Um, which reminds me, I need to renew my membership for that. Um... So yeah, by the time we got home, it was like 7.30. Like we had left the house at like 10 in the morning. So we were like 10.30 or something. So it was a very long day, but it was a lot of fun. And that was my week. So it was just nonstop. And this week isn't too bad. Monday, what's today? Tuesday. I don't remember even what I did yesterday. I don't think, I think it was pretty, oh, I volunteered at Emily's school and that went well. Friday is Halloween parties for both David's school and Emily's school, so I have two Halloween parties to go to. Tomorrow I'm meeting up with somebody. Uh, she is a member of the Ravelry group. She lives nearby, and, you know, we've chatted on VKNs and stuff, so I'm excited to meet up with her tomorrow. Um, and David's off to school. And then we got parenting class. And then I feel like there's more stuff, but I have to look at my calendar. Just a dozen stuff. So, and next thing you know, it's going to be Thanksgiving, and then it's going to be Christmas, and... Hey, <laughs> so... That's all I got for today. I think we're uh, doing pretty good on time. It looks like maybe 40 minutes-ish. 40, 45 minutes. That's good, so... I need to get back into the craft show swing of things. That's going on December 5th, so I need to get my button gear. I got some more, uh arm knit cowls to make and I'm make up some more dishcloths and then I gotta get on the perler bandwagon and get a bunch of bows and curl perlers out um I think that was all I was gonna do so I'm so just looking at easy things to make so oh bags so I gotta bust out the new sewing machine and get some bags done so hope everyone has a good week and is enjoying the fall weather it's been it's been actually relatively nice around here it's been a little bit crispy cool air that I like. It's not been hot and it's not been too cold, so weather was perfect for the uh, 
Huckleberry Railroad. So I will talk at you next week. I don't know the new school volunteer schedule, so I'm hope I'm really crossing my fingers that I'm free Mondays again, so I can get back onto my normal schedule. Again, if you uh, the Needle Nook, please contact me, and uh, we can talk about the your prize for. Uh, for the 100 member giveaway so again you have a month to contact me and if i don't hear anything i will draw again so i'll just keep drawing until someone says hey i want your prize so take care everybody see you next time